hello again uh, this is Shahid al Qassas uh, Sharjah American International School and uh, today as requested by my students uh, we are going to have um, a very fast revision for grade uh, 11 um, this revision will include um, uh, discussing the basic parts of uh, the curriculum for this term and and for this term uh, we are discussing two basic parts two major parts and they are the uh, circular motion and the uh, fluid mechanics so uh, this is um, a summary for the definitions that uh, that you need to know uh, we are going to start with the centripetal accelerations and is a very important uh, definition and it is the acceleration directed towards the center of the circular path um, and it is uh, basically sometimes we can ask you why we have a centripetal acceleration or what is the main reason of uh, the, 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 the existence of the centripetal acceleration so the, the answer should be it is due to the, uh, the continuous change of the direction of the tangential velocity so this is the definition of the centripetal uh, acceleration uh, I would suggest that you have uh, a pencil and a paper so you can copy these uh, definitions or you can have a snapshot for these definitions from the video uh, the gravitational force uh, is the mutual force between uh, or attraction between particles uh, the, the or between masses um, here uh, we don't need the rotational motion but you, you need to uh, define the circular motion which is uh, the, the motion of any object uh, uh, in a circular path this is the definition of the circular motion tangential acceleration uh, is the instantaneous linear acceleration which is directed along the tangent of the circular path tangential speed is the linear speed of the object directed also as a tangent of the object circular path then the torque is the quantity that measures uh, the ability of the force to rotate an object around some axis uh, then the second part of our curriculum which is related to uh, uh, fluid mechanics buoyant force which is the force that acts upward uh, on uh, both submerged or floating objects so you have FB in two cases but the values of the FB uh, is, is, is different for sure fluid is any non-solid state of matter in which the, the atoms or molecules are free to move past each other could be gas or a liquid uh, the ideal fluid is not that important for this year density is the mass per unit volume it is measured in kilograms per meter uh, cube or per liter so it's a mass per unit volume the pressure P which is mass per unit area as uh, a force per unit or uh, area sorry it's the magnitude of the force per unit area that's why we measure it using Newton per meter square so this is the glossary for the main definitions that you need I would suggest that you copy these things or to keep a record for these important definitions um, also I prepared um, here the, the the rule summary in an attractive way I hope that it is an attractive way so this is my own judgment maybe you have another opinion um, uh, this is um, the, these are the basic formulas that you are going to use and here you are starting with the AC which is the centripetal acceleration VT squared over R measured in meters per second square uh, FC is the mass times acceleration or mass times VT squared over R which is the AC here you just substituted the value of the AC here it's measured in newtons the force here is measured in newtons gravitational force between two masses is equal to G uh, M1 M2 over R square and G is the gravitational constant it will be given in your uh, uh, problems M1 is the mass 1 and the second mass is M2 R square is the distance between the two centers of the masses if you are talking about planets so it's the distance between the two centers of uh, the planets if we are talking about a satellite that is uh, moving around uh, the earth so uh, if, if you're if you're talking about this this motion around the earth so uh, it's
it is the distance between uh, the 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 satellite itself and uh, the, the 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 earth plus the radius so and this is if this is the earth and this is the radius of the earth let's call it r1 and this is mm, for example the satellite here it looks like a bird anyway and this is the height or we call it an altitude so you need to add both r's or the height and the radius in order to get the total r that you're going to use in the uh, the formula of the f orbital speed and orbital period uh, are two important values that you need also to uh, to be able to calculate the v orbital speed is the square root of the gm over r and the g is also the gravitational constant m and this is important here m is the object the mass of the object uh, that is in the center of rotation so if we are talking about the velocity of 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 the orbital velocity orbital speed of this satellite the mass i'm going to substitute here is the mass of the earth so it is the mass of the object being rotated around or it is the the, the, the object in the center uh, also for the um, for the orbital period we are going to have this formula 2 pi the square root of r cube divided by gm and also m is the object that is being rotated about so uh, even if we are talking about the earth and the moon here and we need the orbital speed or we need the uh, orbital time period or the time that is required to complete one circle one complete rotation you are going to use the mass of the earth the r here is the distance between the two centers here so this is the r and the g is the gravitational constant uh, i would suggest that you use uh, the the form that has no uh, square root this is only a suggestion if 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 the square root is is um, is, is fine with you so just use it but in the problems I would like to use this v square is equal to g m over r so if you wanted the, the v don't forget to get the square root of numbers it's 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 um, better to get a square root of a number than square root of values here so just just use the the way that you are uh, comfortable with so the also the t I, I love to use the t square is equal to 4 pi r cube divided by gm it's it's better for me i don't know if if you would like to use the square root use the square root i have no problem um don't forget the units um the v is in meters per second and the time is in seconds so uh, this is the idea here uh for the torque the torque is uh, the, the product of the force and distance and don't forget that we are talking about uh, the D here is the distance from the axis of rotation which is mm, we can call it the arm length so if you have an arm here and you have different forces this one F1 for example and you have F2 and I have given you here the angle here in this part which is 30 degrees and I have given you something like that and the angle is here uh, let's say 40 degrees and this is the axis of rotation also there is a force here which is having an angle of uh, let's say 50 degrees and this is F1, F2, F3 and F4 um, look carefully so we have one two three four four forces so your initial assumption that uh, will be that we have four torques but if you focus a little bit you'll find out that the torque due to this force is zero because the theta here is zero and sine zero is zero uh, look here and you'll find out that f4 also has no torque because it is the at the axis of rotation there is no torque at the axis of rotation so also this will be zero so the total torque 
will be only due to torque 2 plus torque 3 uh, so uh, try to get the direction uh, counterclockwise or clockwise it depends on the rotation so put your finger here and uh, try to figure out how the force will pull the object uh, or the rotate the object so it is obvious that it is counterclockwise here which means that the two torques here are positive torques uh, and then try to substitute here F2 D is the distance between this force and the axis of rotation so D2 sine when you come here just wait a second here the 30 is is the theta between the normal and the force uh, this is not the definition of the torque because the torque needs the theta between or the angle between the force and the arm and this is the force and the arm I need this theta not this one so this is between the normal and the force this is not my theta this is my theta my theta is 60 in this case so sine 60 plus uh, f3 also d3 sine and look at the, the the angle the angle which is 40 it is between the arm and the the force so i will use it directly find your values and it will be in newton meter and the sign will tell you if it's I mean, the total here is positive so it is a counterclockwise if it's negative it is uh, in clockwise then uh, we move to the part of um, um, the make the flow mechanics we have two cases floating or submerged if the object is floating so you are sure that there is no f apparent if apparent is equal to zero if v is equal to if g if you don't have if g directly the weight of the object in newtons you can get it by m of the object times g if you don't have the m also you can get it by density of the object times volume of the object times g if it's submerged so apparently it, it will be having uh, an apparent weight which is not equal to zero in this case and if you wanted to calculate fb it is equal to fg minus f apparent and uh, the uh, then i can ask you to um, to to calculate the density of the object or the density of the float so you can uh, use this formula to calculate the density of the object or the density of the float then i may ask you to find the volume of the object you can use the density equals mass over volume and by the cross multiplication you can find that volume of the object will be equal to mass of the object times the density of the object that could be given or could be calculated in this part and then i may ask you also to get me the displaced fluid volume which in this case in the case of the submerged object it is equal to the volume of the object uh, finally this is the uh, Pascal's principle and Pascal's principle is um, uh, telling us that the pressure is transmitted equally uh, throughout the, the, the object or throughout the particles of the fluid and the walls of the container which means that if you have a piston and uh, in this piston you have an uh, in, um, F in and area in it will be equal to F out over area out and you can find unknown areas or unknown radiuses even or unknown uh, uh, forces uh, don't forget that the pistons they have circular areas so it is pi r square and the pressure is equal to f over a and the pressure is equal to force over area the force could be weight so uh, the weight is a force so the weight over area can calculate the pressure in newton per meter square this is a fast revision for the uh, the basic ideas and i hope that you like the revision please contact me whenever you have a question uh, you can contact us through the facebook group which is sis physics and also on twitter at prof shady you can also contact me p-r-o-f-s-h-a-d-y um, also you can contact me uh, via email which is Shadi dot al qasas s h a d y al qasas e l k a s a s at s i s sharja dot com. Please visit our website. It will help you to find lots of interesting materials. Thank you, and your comments are really valuable to me. So please comment the video if you liked it, if you didn't, and 
feed me back uh, thank you and till we meet again thank you good luck